Yeah, we used to joke when we first met Jeff and started training with him that he was in the witness protection program because like it was like a Bigfoot sighting, you know, like he's he's in the cage for a second and then he's gone. You're like the All-Star app, the number one app in the business. UFC, Bellator, One Championship, PFL and more. Get the app right now. Link in description. Man, you, you, you come from the Contender Series, and we just saw Jamal Hill become the first fighter from the show to become a UFC champion. What was it like watching that transpire? And, and it has an effect on all the other guys that have come from the show as well, I believe. Yeah, you know, I, I was pulling for Glover just because, um, you know, he's a legend. I got to actually meet him at a seminar in Myrtle Beach at Fitness Edge MMA over the summer, and he was just so nice and so gracious. So, um, but it, yeah, 100%. It was really cool to see a guy, the first guy from the Contender Series, come off. And pretty quickly, you know, it's only been a couple of years. We were the same season, I think. Because uh, I was talking to my wife. She's like, what season was he on? I'm like, I think way before me. And then he was actually like two or three weeks after me. So um, it kind of shows the guys coming in through the Contender Series, more so even than tough, are, uh, you know, ready for top competition, you know, like anybody else that comes into the UFC. So um, I think, you know, my guess is because there's not as much shtick and personality. It really is just your story and your fighting, you know? So um, really cool to see, you know, it just shows what's possible with, you know, and how quickly it can happen in the sport. Man, you stacked the four one record so far, man, in the UFC, you know, you've went through five UFC fight weeks. What is something that you could pass along to, you know, young guys that want to be in your position as advice before they get there? Man, I think just accepting that there's a lot of uncontrollables in this game, you know, there's a lot of variables and uh, not holding on to, your identity, you know, first of all, your identity as a fighter being in your record, but secondly, your identity as a, as a human being, not being to being a fighter, you know, this is, this is my favorite passion. You know, this is my lifelong passion. I love fighting. Um, but when it's all said and done, my identity can't strictly lie in fighting. You know, it has to be something that is really cool that I get to do and to always appreciate it. You know, the day you take this for granted, I think is the day you start training. It becomes like any other job. You know, we all go places where somebody's doing their job because it's their job and they're not passionate about their work. And and no matter what field it is, no one wants to be waited on by that waiter or waitress. No one wants that person making their coffee and getting the order wrong. And no one wants to watch uninspired fighters go through the motions, you know? And um, I think everybody that fights long enough is guilty of it. I know I can look at a certain fight or maybe two of my entire career and, and same thing and just appreciate it because next thing you know, it goes really quick. You know, it feels like I got signed to the UFC yesterday does not feel like my sixth UFC fight is coming up, but it's been over three years. So uh, what's scary to think is that happens two more times and I'm starting, you're starting to be retirement age. So, you know, six more years would be like, oh, you're getting close. So it, I think it happens in the blink of an eye and just treating every fight like it's your last because this is a crazy game and it could be. When, when people, right, when just like regular citizens look at a fighter and the image of a fighter and then they meet you, do they ever tell you like, it doesn't match. Like you're like this well-spoken, nice guy, you know what I mean? Like very happy, low go lucky. And usually they see guys with like tattoos and, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. You know? And I think that's why it was so alarming to people, including like family members and stuff when I was like a young kid and this was my desired goal, my profession, you know? And then as it became, you know, I was terrible at jujitsu. So nobody really paid any mind to it. I don't think they're like, ah, whatever. Like he's not going to be a UFC fighter. And then as it got closer, I'm like, all right, I'm jumping. I'm going to be, you know, an amateur fighter and a professional fighter. And uh, it just wasn't lining up with what people expected, I think. And uh, but it's cool. You know, it's 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 one of those things where, like, I'll be at my daughter's daycare or something like, hey, what do you do for a living? You're like, yeah, it's I know. Like, it's it, it's crazy, you know. But the funniest part is you do all this stuff because it's, you know, something I love. And then the, the benefit is it's kind of a cool thing. It's a good conversation starter. And uh, one, I'm kind of introverted. But two is like, I guarantee when my kids grow up, they're going to be like more so like, you did what? Like, that's stupid. That's barbaric. Or like, you, they're not even going to appreciate the fact that it was kind of cool, you know? So um, we used to laugh. My instructor, John Hassett, growing up, would always say <clears throat> like, you know, the belt doesn't matter, the end goal, all that stuff. Like, he's like, you're going to spend your whole life, you know, complaining about promotions, wanting to be a black belt and all this stuff. And then you're going to get your black belt. And the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to tell someone and they're going to go, oh, cool, my niece is a black belt. She's uh, 11. You're going to be like, no, it's in jiu-jitsu. You got to be an adult. Like, it's hard. To do. 
So don't put your identity in that. Like, just do it because you want to do it. You know, and I've seen that get into the UFC. I, somehow I meet the people that have no idea what the UFC is all the time. They're like, oh, do you get paid for that? You're like, oh, it's on ESPN. Like, oh, gosh. But uh, it, it just gets back to doing it for you and the ones you love, and you know, because you love to do it. Definitely. You return, man, February 18th against Benoit St. Denis. Thoughts on the matchup and the stylistic parts that intrigue you? Yeah, I mean, uh, I was watching them today. There's a lot of stylistic parts that intrigue me. But uh, definitely a good matchup. Definitely always a tough matchup. At 155, I don't think, in the UFC in general, but especially this weight class and a couple others, there's no one anywhere in the rankings that's uh, anywhere close to an easy matchup. But, uh, yeah, I think he's shown glimpses of being, you know, fancying his stand-up. But in most of the fights I've seen, he's definitely been like a grappler, almost to a specialist standpoint. And, uh that's super intriguing, you know, because I train with all these guys that are really, really good wrestlers and good grapplers, jiu-jitsu guys, top game, and a lot of them are bigger than me in bigger weight classes. And, you know, St. Denis had fought other weight classes as well, I think just 170. So you go, you know, you got to watch it and go, oh, man, like, it, it really is that hypothesis of, like, is he going to feel like the guys I train with? Is there a chance he could feel stronger than some of the 205 and 85ers I've grappled, you know? So it's exciting in that regard because – if we hit the floor, I think it becomes what it's been for me since I started grappling at a relatively high level, you know, 10 plus years ago is, you know, using my IQ and my ability to scramble and, and keep a pace. Um, on the feet, you know, everyone in this division is dangerous. You're, you know, big, strong guy. He has good punches, good rear kick, um, and he's aggressive. So that poses a fun challenge in itself because maybe we end up stuck on the feet and I get to showcase, you know, all the hard work I do on my stand up and, you know, God willing, I get to go out there and show it. So, um, the best part is my coaches have dissected it. I've gotten to look at it now. I've fought on cards with them before. So we're super familiar. And he has a game where he has such strong things he does. But it's almost like I can focus, you know, 90% on me, which is typically what we prefer anyway. So uh, it's pretty cut and dry. He's super tough, super physical, very aggressive, and keeps a good pace. So I think that makes for a really dynamic, exciting matchup. And uh, I think, you know, there's some areas I can definitely expose. Week in and week out, you know, you, you get to grapple with John Salter, who's probably one of the best grapplers out there in, in MMA. So I guess you could build your confidence off that, right? Just going out, going against him and, and, and you know, winning some and losing some and learning a lot from losing those exchanges, yeah. right? Yeah, it's not like I'm having success with him, but I think you go, because I'm not, he big brother's made, but I think it's one of those things where you go, well, there's never going to be a point in the fight where I'm in unfamiliar territory. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way if this is, you know, John's one of the very best in the world, just from a strictly grappling standpoint, going to ADCC and stuff. So I think you see it and you go, you feel it and you go, okay, like worst case scenario, this guy is undiscovered grappling ace should be an ADCC. He's going to feel like this, you know, so it won't be uncharted territory where you're like completely lost and never felt anything like this type deal, you know, um, and getting to learn from someone like that, you know. John and everyone at South Belgium Jiu-Jitsu has such a high pedigree in Jiu-Jitsu and grappling that I'm getting those great looks, you know, and then getting in the room at GMO with some of the collegiate wrestlers and John Russell, you know, was a national champion in college as well, but also some, you know, uh, guys that are just starting on their MMA journey, Paul Carson, Tom Lane, they're division one wrestlers, really tough, you know, and, and also 185ers. So we're getting the best of both worlds. I think I'm getting every look I could possibly need. And, uh, the, you know, the culmination is on fight night. It's just a matter of stepping in there and implementing it. But this has certainly been all of them. I've always worked super hard, um, but working hard at the right things. And I think this has been like the no stone unturned, you know, fight camp for me. And, uh, you know, I hope to make it that way going forward. Yeah. You seem to have found the perfect combination for your coaching, which is salty dog and, and, and Jimmo man. And, and talking about coach Jimmo and working with him and he's kind of the guys, he's kind of like one of the guys that is a great mind, but kind of, he flies under the radar, right? You don't really see him like on camera or anything like that. Yeah. Just talk about the benefits of working with him. Yeah. We used to joke when we first met Jeff and started training with him that he was in the witness protection program <laughs> because like, it was like a Bigfoot sighting, you know, like he's, he's in the cage for a second, then he's gone. You're like, what the heck? Uh, but that's just, I think that's a testament to who he is. You know, he, he is truly, truly like a humble leader. And uh, it's just, you know, just, I'm, I'm almost 30 years old. I have a family. I, I end up teaching some jujitsu and I teach a salty dog and I teach a fitness edge MMA. And, um, so in these small leadership roles sometimes where you go, man, like getting to observe someone like that, who is living a life of like humble leadership is really, really cool. Um, and then being the recipient of it, because, 
you know, I'm training under him. So that's been awesome as well. You know, just from, he gives selflessly and, and his knowledge is tremendous. You know, he's able to look at these guys and not try to make us fight them the way he thinks that they can be beat, but fight them the way that we can beat them. You know, I think that's really important too, because, you know, we can sit back and watch film of anybody all day long and say, well, this is their weakness. But if St. Denis is, uh, has a weakness for a head kick, well, my flexibility is not exactly the best. So he's not making me get out of sight of my game. And I think that's what he does really, really well is, uh, you know, we're a small gym, but we're a high level gym. So we have access to him and the athlete development is just through the roof, you know, and, uh, I've definitely gotten to be on the receiving end of that, especially this camp. Cause I, I was coming up, you know, during Scott Holtzman's camp. So, you know, over four months ago, I was trying to make like every other week and get up here and uh, I got the fight pretty far out. So he's just mapped everything for me, the strength and conditioning periodization. And, uh, it's been amazing. You know, it really, really has been. And I just can't thank him enough. And the culture he's created has been awesome. And then I'm back home, you know, I was Monday, Tuesday there and Saturday and I'm getting beat up by John and, uh, training with Wyatt Hopkins, another great young grappler who I get to grapple with all the time. And, uh, my kickboxing coach, Alan Branch. So I really get the best of both worlds and, uh, really, really kind of spoiled in that regard because there's guys who are a lot more high profile athletes than me who make a lot more money than me and probably don't get that one-on-one attention that I get from, you know, Salty Dog and Jim O and Fitness Edge MMA. Uh, so I'm really, really fortunate in that regard. Scott Holzman, man, he just retired and you were part of his retirement camp, basically. Was it bittersweet, man, just to go through that and, and, and think to think about like eventually you'll have to do that like years <laughs> down the line, though, you know? You know what? Uh, yes and no, because, you know, anytime I watch my teammates and they're kind of mentors when they're, you know, that much, you know, they're a couple years older than me. So I get to like learn from them. You know, Scott was like nine or 10 fights in the UFC when I met him. So it was like one of those, like he's up here and I was always looking up to him, same way John and Brian, <clears throat> sorry. And, um, you know, the thing about it was he was really, uh, like positive the whole time. It wasn't a sad thing. It was him choosing to retire. No one was forcing him out. So it was kind of like watching him get his freedom, you know, uh, his last day of camp. He's like, Oh man, I might just, uh, take my phone roller and all this gear and just put it in a burn pit and just be done. Like I never have to, you know, phone roll again. I never have to warm up again, like unless he wants to. And, um, it was pretty cool to see how excited he was. <coughs> and, uh, you know, the thing was, is he seemed really appreciative, uh, of like, this is the last time I get to do this or that, even in the hard stuff. So, getting to see those guys, you get to learn from those lessons and be like, man, I got to be appreciative right now because one day this is all going to be over. And, um, you know, I plan on being in the gym until I die, you know, God willing, but you know, competitively it's going to be over for me. And, uh, you want to appreciate every moment, you know? And I think that's, that's one of those things that getting to be a part of that was kind of cool. You got to see him sail off in the sunset and, you know, the decision didn't go his way, but it was a heck of a flight. And I think it was one of those performances where if we were in the movie, you, you know, he puts his arm around his coaches and his family and walks off into the sunset. So it was, uh, cool to be a small part and just get to be around him for that i believe uh you have a, a second child on the way what does that do to your mindset during a training camp yeah i mean it was just you know motivation is fleeting but it was nice to have you know it was nice to find out it's nice to carry that with me um and it also puts things in perspective you know i'm providing for my family so when i'm going away on these long you know now it's like four day stretches of being away from the family and you know my wife's at home pregnant my daughter's at home and then we have you know there's a baby on the way and uh, it really reminds you of why you're doing this you know it's a uh, it's very sobering when you're sitting here like it just narrowed in the focus you know it was like one of those things where there's no way I'm going to be sitting up here in this room by myself and being like oh why am I doing like I know why I'm doing this you know of course this is something I, I want to do for you know 10 year old me that wanted to be here too but now you're like dude like there's not I, I'll text my wife sometimes like what I did that day uh, if it was like a really hard workout I'd be like I'm not up here in vain, you know, nothing for granted and uh, nothing. I'm not up here just, you know, doing the bare minimum. Like, okay, practice is over. Let me sneak out the door. Like uh, I'm doing everything, man, everything. And no stone unturned. So it's been awesome. And then there's just the excitement of going, man, like, you know, this fight, maybe one more. And I don't know if I'm healthy before then. And then I get to meet, you know, my son. It's going to be amazing. So, um, and, and also, you know, the thing about, you know, I have a daughter and I think the thing with that is showing a little girl how she should be treated, you know, when she's older. Um, but now when you go, I'm going to have a son, like I got to go out there and, and show him how a man should conduct himself, you know, and, and be bold and fight hard and, uh, you know, stand your ground. It's not necessarily about the record. It's about the performance and the, how you live your life. So it just, just a whole new 
thing of things to unpack and think about while I'm here and on that long drive home on Fridays. And uh, yeah, just all the way around a complete blessing. And I, I couldn't be more grateful. What are you expecting, man, out of yourself in this fight against uh, St. Denise? Man, I think it's going to have to be scrappy and, and, and a grind because that's just how the 155 division is, right? Of course, we're prepared to capitalize on any areas, you know, if he gets caught sleeping at the wheel, I think I can hurt him anywhere. And I think I can, you know, always catch a neck, but, uh, you know, if his boxes are checked the same way mine are, it could be a really grimy fight. And, uh, that's what we've trained for. You know, I, we're not having all these wrestling practices and hard sparring and, you know, dates with the echo bike to go out there and have a cakewalk. You know, we know who's in front of us. I know his background and, and how tough he is and what he's shown so far. So I think it's one of those, I have to fight every single exchange tooth and nail and, you know, I win more exchanges than him, get my hand raised after 15 minutes. That's how it has to be. February 18th, UFC Fight Night in Las Vegas. Go into descriptions, download the All-Star app. Joe Selecki, thank you, man, so much for the time and uh, all the best in this fight. I think this is a, a crazy matchup, especially stylistically. And, I, and, I, and I'm expecting some, some grappling exchanges because uh -huh. I love seeing those in the octagon because we rarely see like high-level grappling exchanges. Man, I hope so, because uh, it's fun to get matched up with these good grapplers and test yourself, you know. So I hope it's exciting, and, uh, you know, I, I want to be able to show the world what I can do. I think my MMA – I think my whole game's coming along, you know, of course, I think very well. But, uh, uh, man, I think I'm one of the best MMA grapplers in the world, especially at this weight class. So I really want to get to display that because that's, you know, almost 25 years of, of work in that department. So I, I want to show the world that, you know, and – and show all the people that help me. So yeah, man, I appreciate you so much having me, John. It's always good to talk with you, bro. I always look forward to it.